It's my pleasure today to introduce our today's short program speaker, Don Kraft. Don joined Rotary in 1948 in the University Club, and after six years, he moved his membership to our Seattle Four. For the past 66 years, Don has been a distinguished member of our club, and he was club president of Seattle Four in 1973 and 74. I think the most amazing thing that I can say in introducing Don is he has maintained his perfect attendance for all 72 years. Don is truly Mr. Rotary. It was my pleasure to nominate Don for honorary membership in our club in 1998. As many of you know, honorary membership is the highest distinction a club can bestow and is conferred only in exceptional cases. Don is truly exceptional. Don is joined today by his wife, Midge, some family members, and many of Don's friends. So Don, we look forward to your remarks. Uh, thanks, Bill, uh, for that introduction and, and for your part in my being here today. And, and correct congratulations to you and Judy on your 58th wedding anniversary today. Thank you. You know, it's a truly an honor to be asked to share some thoughts to you about my time in Rotary. Um, as some of you may know, uh, the, we Crafts are a four-generation Rotary family. I have two nephews in, in this club, Dave and Jim, and a brother in the university club, a son-in-law, and two grandchildren in, in Bellevue, and I'm, I'm very proud of all of them. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> My dad was elected first vice president of Rotary International under Nitish Lahiri here um, of India, who came to Seattle and challenged our club to uh, work with clubs in, in developing nations. Our club responded in spades, resulting in two projects in Fiji and two in Vaisag, India. My dad uh, took the lead and ultimately became known as the father of uh, world community service throughout Rotary for many years. Here he was just known as Mr. Rotary. <clears throat> My first six years were in the university district. Uh, my sponsor there was unaware that my dad was a Rotarian. He just thought I had, I operated the leading advertising agency in the entire University District, and he's right, it was the only one. <clears throat> uh, that was 1948, I was 21, six weeks out of college. Uh, attendance was really important back then, drop below 60% and you were asked to leave. I was always fortunate with my health and it was just someone, something everyone did. Nearly half of our club were 100 percenters. I enjoyed the meetings and there never seemed to be a good reason not to attend. I, I certainly never dreamed of it going this long. 72 years, we got to be kidding each other. Um, we elect the uh, board of the Seattle Rotary Service Foundation to advance the cause of our dozens of service um, efforts that our club does so well. But the board spends half their time as bill collectors. And when we all joined this club, we agreed to make a reasonable annual local foundation gift every year and a modest international get donation. And I'd like to ask you to do yourself and your club a favor. When the next ask comes, would you please just respond on day one? I let them know that you're out there. If you're having a struggling financially or you'd like to spread out your payments or whatever, just let them know. It's what the four-way test would have you do. Uh, most of you are probably of, of, uh, familiar with Jim Pinkham and Ernie Skeel and our club's role in Rotary becoming the world's first service club in 1911. They got National Rotary to rally around this idea of he profits most who serves best. 
And that original slogan was being phased over to service above self about the time I joined. Um, now service above self is, is a wonderful aspiration, no doubt about it, but maybe it better describes Mother Teresa than it does me or probably you. And uh, it seemed to me that it should be considered more of a continuum than, than an accomplished fact. In reflecting on my 72 years, I think maybe the most important benefit I've had from belonging to Rotary has being able to relate every single week with an absolute room full of role models. It's been very important to me. Now I'm gonna pr propose to you three role models that you might consider for yourself. Uh, the late Alvin Thompson, Dr. Alvin Thompson became our first African-American member in 1968. He grew up in Washington, D.C. and attended all black schools from grade school through medical school. And throughout his life, he faced ra ra racial discrimination and segregation. But he per perse persevered in what I would call a very Martin Luther King kind of way. After he moved to Seattle, he became a leader of both of the medical and the broader communities. And because of his constant de dedication to bridging gaps in his profession, he was sometimes referred to as the Thurgood Marshal of Medicine. I enjoyed Al's friendship when we were in Rotary together, and I can recommend him very highly as a service above self role model. John Durbin was our president who admitted women in, into Seattle Rotary in 1987. When he came into office, a straw poll showed that the, the club was 60-40 against having women. But John talked about it often from the podium, and he did it in spite of pretty strong opposition from some of our most highly respected good old boys, not including my dad, incidentally. He was even, in effect, told to knock it off or he'd have somewhat of a revolt on his hands. But John persisted because he thought it was just the right thing to do. We became one of the first major clubs in all of Rotary International to admit women at the end of John's um, term of office when our club voted 60-40 in favor of admitting women. Thank you, John. John Durbin is definitely a guy who puts service ahead of self-interest. I've attended scores of Rotary New President inaugural speeches. We have one every July, but the only one I can remember was on July 11th, 2001. That's when a young Dorothy Bullitt ascended to the podium. And very surprisingly on that day, she described how she had come into Rotary kind of with her fingers crossed. Uh, and how she had viewed the club as a sea of old white men, where she was keenly aware of her gender, her age, and her political affiliation, and she wondered how she could possibly fit in. You might say that Dorothy didn't need Rotary. She was a Phi Beta Kappa, had a law degree and an MBA. She was a man management consultant a lawyer, a writer of books, and a frequent speaker. Uh, but uh, she told us how she got to know more members. She wanted to get more involved. And incredibly, she recruited one of the oldest old guys in the club to be a right hand as she and other Rotarians uh, early in her membership led a sizable community effort in West Seattle known as the Unity Project. She went on to be uh, elected president of the club at a young age 
and had a very good year as president. And now 20 years later, Dorothy Bullitt is as good a Rotarian as they come. Al Thompson, John Durbin, and Dorothy Bullitt. They're th th all three are outstanding role models. And there are many more I could have named like these and, <clears throat> and these and these. Now, this is about a quarter of our club uh, on a service above self continuum. I think they all rate pretty darn highly. The rest of you undoubtedly do too. I, I just don't know you as well, but I'd like to work on that. Nobody's perfect. We can all aspire to elevate the service we give in our lives. Uh, where do you think you rank? Is there any room for improvement? Sure, there is for all of us. Thanks. Thank you, Don, and happy belated birthday. You are truly a club treasure. Thanks for sharing your thoughts with us today. And Bill Weisfield, thanks for helping to arrange uh, today's short program with Don.